In this video, we're going to continue our work with sequences and series and look at arithmetic sequences. As we saw in the last video, a sequence is an ordered set of terms generated by a rule. In this video, we'll focus on arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence has a common difference. So, the terms are either increasing or decreasing by a fixed amount. If we have a look at an example, we might have 6, then we could have 9, we could have 12, we could have 15, and so on and so forth. We can see that this is increasing by 3 each time, and it has a first term of 6. We would say that A is going to be equal to 6, the first term, and D, the common difference, is positive 3. We can find any term in an arithmetic sequence by using the formula a sub n is going to be equal to a, the first term, plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, where d is the common difference. So if we look at this one right here, this is going to be a. This is going to be a plus 1 lot of d, so 6 plus 3. This is going to be a plus 2 lots of d, so that's 6 plus 3 plus 3. Then we've got a plus 3d, dot, 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 and we will go right the way up to a plus n minus 1d. And that is the nth term. Whenever we're answering questions on sequences and series and their arithmetic, I strongly suggest down the side of the page we put a, n, d, s, and L. Lots of times we will be given three pieces of information to find the fourth. Here A is the first term, N is the number, D is the common difference, and it is common, so this is the difference. We will look at this shortly. This is the sum, so if we added the terms, and this is the last term, or if you like, the nth term. So that is simply using this right here. So once we have this information, A, N, D, S, and L, we'll find three pieces from the question to allow us to get the fourth. What we're going to do is just start off by looking at whether a sequence is arithmetic or not. So state whether following sequences are arithmetic or not. So this now is question number five, and in part A, we got three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. So we're adding two, we're adding two, we're adding two, we're adding two. Yes, it is. So here, this is arithmetic. We've got a common difference now of positive two. So if this was going down, the common difference would be negative two. Okay, that's going down by three, that's going down by three, that's going down by three, that's going down by three. But this only is going down by two. So it's not it's arithmetic up to this point right here, but we do need to check. There's not a common difference. Now, if we were just going up to this point right here, we would have had a difference now, common difference of negative 3. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got 0 0.25, so that's a quarter, negative 1 half. We've got negative 5 over 4, negative 2, and negative 11 over 4. So this one is slightly more challenging. What we've got here, and I'll just write this out, and I'll write these all in quarters. What we've got here is one quarter. We've got now a negative, and that's going to be negative 2 over 4. We've got negative 5 over 4. We've got negative 2, which we could write as negative 8 over 4. And we've got now negative 11 over 4. Four. So we can see now that this is arithmetic, yes it is, and we can say that the common difference on here is going to be now negative 3 over 4. Now if we just look at this in general, what we could say if we wanted, now if this we call this one A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5, we could say that a2 minus a1 will be equal now to, 
And all we're going to say on here is that A3 minus A2. Now, this will help us later when we get more challenging questions. But essentially, if I do this value, subtract that, then I'm going to get the same as if I take this value and subtract that one. And it's probably easier to see here. So if we look at the 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11, if we put on here A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5, we can see that A2 minus A1 is going to be equal to 2. We can see that A3 minus A2 is going to be equal to 2. We can see that A4 minus A3 is going to be equal to 2 and so on and so forth. So if we subtract backwards, we should have that fixed amount. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. Okay, this is question number six. We're asked to find the 12th term in each of the following sequences. So we'll assume that they are all going to be arithmetic. You'll generally be told that they are arithmetic. So what we'll use is a sub n, this is the nth term, is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. This is a formula, it will be given in the formula book, and all we need to do is find the values and substitute in. I'm not going to go ahead and count, because often students who don't uh, either apply or learn or use the formula just want to do this manually. But if we said the 120th term of 1947th is going to get hard. So A, N, D, S and L. You might be looking at this thinking, well, I don't really don't need this. Um, but I think for harder questions, it's really helpful. So A, that's the first term, 1. If we look, N is going to be 12. What we need to do is find the common difference. So I'm looking at uh, finding now the nth term. I've got the value of A. I've got the value of N. I need the value of D. Well, D, we can see, is going to be on here, 3. So, all I'm going to do is substitute in. So, the 12th term, A12, is the first one, plus what we've got here is 12. 12 minus 1 is going to give me 11, multiplied now by the 3. So, we can see that's going to give us on here 34. Now, you might say, why didn't you count up? Um, as you'll see, over time, it's not uh, really the most efficient way of doing it. Okay, let's look at the next one. So A, N, D, S and L. So A is the first term, N is the number, D is the difference, S is the sum, L is the last term. Just going to plug it into here. So we've got 6. 6 is the first term. Again, N is 12 as we need the 12th term. The common difference, it goes 6 to 4 to 2 to 0. The common difference is negative 2. Sometimes students want to put down that it's 2. It's going down, so it's negative. So we can say in this one, A, 12. All I'm doing is substituting in the numbers. is going to be A, 6. And then we're going to have plus N minus 1, which is 11, multiplied now by the negative 2. So what's that going to give us? Negative 22 plus 6, which is negative 16. So we can see now that the 12th term is negative 16. Okay, let's look at this one right here. So we'll assume it's arithmetic and not worry about working them all out. So A, N, D, S and L. Again, I can see each time that I've used this, I've had three pieces of information to find the fourth. So what we've got then is A, well that is going to be one quarter or 0 0.25. Again, N is 12. If we look at the common difference, this is going to be, now it's going down by three quarters. Um, if you want, you can put negative 0 0.75 or negative 3 over 4. So again, A12 is going to be one quarter of the first plus 11 multiplied by the common difference, which is going to be negative 3 over 4. So this is going to give me now on here, we're going to have negative 33 over 4 plus 1, which is going to be negative 32 over 4, which is going to give us now negative 8. So negative 33 over 4, 
uh, and then we're going to add one to that, so that's going to be negative 32 over 4, and we get negative 8. So that's the 12th term. So as stated, um, you can see it's a lot easier to use this particular approach than trying to do it manually, and you will be penalised if you do it manually. So there we go, that is finding now the 12th term. So all we've done is just jump to it. We might be asked for the 8th term, we might be asked for the 96th term. Okay, question 7. Find the number of terms in the following sequences. So again, we assume that arithmetic, 4, 8, 12, 16 and so on and so forth, right up to the nth term. So we know that a sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1d. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence is given like so. So let's look at this one right here. So a, n, d, s and l. Well, we want to know now the value of n. We've got a is going to be equal to 4. That's the first term. N is going to be n, which we need to solve for. The difference here, well, it's increasing by 4. We don't have the sum, but we do have the last term of 84, or, if you like, the nth term. So what we can do is write that 84 is going to be equal to, so I'm simply substituting in the first term, which is 4, plus n minus 1, which we don't know, multiplied now by d, which is going to be 4. So subtracting 4, 80 is going to be equal to 4, then we're going to have n minus 1, so I'm just rewriting that. We're going to have, dividing both sides by 4, 20 is going to be equal to n minus 1, so we can see that n is going to be 21. So the number of terms is going to be 21. Okay, let's look at the next one, a, n, d, s, and L. So A, first term, 3. We want to find N. We've got now a common difference. That's going down by 2, down by 2, down by 2. So difference is negative 2. Not got the sum. We have got the nth term of the last term, which is negative 81. So just setting this up, we've got negative 81. I'm just plugging in here the nth term of the last term. That's going to be equal to first term, which is 3, plus n minus 1 multiplied now by negative 2. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, let's do that. That's going to give me now negative 84 is equal to negative 2 and then n minus 1. Dividing both sides by this value of negative 2, that's going to give me plus 4. 42, and that's going to be equal to n minus 1. So we can see that n is going to be 43. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. And of course, if you wanted to check that that works, just substitute in a sub 43 is going to be equal to the first term, which is 3, plus now 42 multiplied by the common difference, which is going to be the negative 2. So this is going to be 3, then we're going to have minus 84, which is going to give us now the negative 81, as expected. So you can go ahead and check. OK, let's now look at the last one. So we've got on the last one, 1 6, we've got 2 thirds, and so on and so forth. So if we just look at this, what we've got, we've got uh, 1 over 6. If I just swap this up, this is going to be 4 over 6. If I just look at that, that's 7 over 6. That's going to be 10 over 6. So collecting the information, A, N, D, S and L. A, that's going to be 1 over 6. We know that we're looking for the number, which is going to be N. We've got this value right here. Now, we can see that this is increasing by 3 over 6. Or, if you like, 3 over 6 is going to be 1 over 2. So the difference is 1 over 2. We don't have the sum, but we do have 35 over 3 as the last term. So that's what we end up with, just plugging these in. So again, just looking at this, we're going to get 3 over 6 is the common difference, and we plug these in. So we're just using now a sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. 
So we got 35 over 3 is equal to 1 over 6 plus n minus 1 multiplied now by the difference, which is going to be 1 half. Okay, if we just look at this now, what I've got here uh, is 35 over 3. So 35 over 3 is 70 over 6 minus 1, 6 is going to be 69 over 6. And that is going to be equal to now 1 half. Then we're going to have n minus 1. Okay, uh, so if we said now, and I, I'm kind of doing this a bit, uh, a bit, we could divide this by half. If you want to just write it as a, an equivalent fraction, that's what we'd end up with. Uh, you can solve this however you want. Uh, so what's that going to be? That's going to be 23 is equal to n minus 1. So 24 is going to be equal to n. And that's what we end up with. So I've kind of uh, been a bit uh, slack with that in terms of working out. But as you can see, all we need to do, this is a non-calculator module. So it's good to get used to the fractions. So we've looked at finding a term in a, an arithmetic sequence. We've looked at finding a uh, the number of terms we might be given anything all we do is collect three pieces of information substitute into this particular formula and then go ahead and solve for the unknown in later videos we will look at examples where we have both a sum and a term and look at combining the information to find missing values that is a basic introduction to arithmetic sequences